Hello and welcome to another video of Viday. In this video, we will be learning about the chapter atomic structure. This is the part 3 of the atomic structure and rather the final one as well. I am Ryan, a volunteer of Viday from exams Viday where everything is possible. Last video, we have to learn the type of valencies and the chemical formula, the formulation of chemical compounds and the chemical equations. For now, we haven't covered the chemical equations, so I am so I planned to cover the chemical equations in this video, and then we'll be going into laws of chemical combinations. Chemical equation. So you have seen a lot of chemical reactions happening in your daily lives, but what if someone told you to write it in a piece of paper? So what you can do is you can come make use of these chemical compounds formulation that we have learnt in the last video and then pay it to practice. And chemical reactions are mainly of two components, the reactants, the final, the initial pro things that you will handle with and the products, the final products that you get after the end of the chemical reaction. So, you can see the reactants to be magnesium and sulfuric acid and the products in red which is magnesium sulfate and hydrogen so how does this look like as a chemical reaction in front of our eyes so you have magnesium scrapes here plus sulfuric acid which is a liquid acid and then you have magnesium sulfate which is a salt white colored one and then you have hydrogen gas leaving from the salt so this is basically how we are going to write it in the paper. So magnesium plus sulfuric acid gives magnesium sulfate with hydrogen. So reactants are the substance that take part in a chemical reaction and products are the substance that are formed in the chemical reaction. So let's try to write a chemical reaction. So before we will be writing it, the chemical reaction that is we'll be writing the common and the fundamental compound names as it is so if we have sulfuric acid we'll be writing sulfuric acid as it is like h2so4 if, we, if it's combining with magnesium you put magnesium here and if you just place these right those are called skeletal equation it's pretty much simple that you can see it from this case but there's something other thing called as balanced equation. When you write these skeletal equations, right, you will notice that magnesium on the left hand side is more than the magnesium on the right hand side. But if you look at in this reaction, magnesium is same as the left hand side and the right hand side. That is same amount of magnesium. You can see one here, you can see one here. So let's take an example between a reaction of lead and oxygen. So, first what we do is write the word equation in order to reduce confusion. So, lead plus oxygen gives lead oxide. Lead 2 oxide for one such case, at one particular temperature you will get lead 2 oxide, at other temperatures you will get lead 3 oxide. But for now, let us take a case of lead 2 oxide. So, lead plus oxygen gives lead oxide, simple enough, right? So, the next step is we are going to write a chemical equation in a skeletal form so you just write as it is like i told you right you write lead as pb that's the symbol of it and oxygen as o2 and lead oxide will be pbo notice here that the amount of oxygen here is higher than here like it has two here and it has one here so our goal is to make the equation balanced so step three is write the number of times the element has occurred in both the sides so you have one lead here and another lead here which means two and then you have two oxygen here and one oxygen here which means three so write this table column and compare which element is lower or higher and the number which has occurred less number of times is told to be balanced first right since lead has a low number in recurrence, first we multiply with a certain integer or fractions if you want, but the integers are mostly considered to balance the equation on both the sides. So, what you do is you have one lead here and you have another lead here. 
meaning you will multiply with one and one here so you have one lead giving one lead that's basically it now the first step five is for oxygen you got to go with number threes and fours from the step three iteratively and finish the table column by balancing everything so if you go to step five you will be getting one oxygen two oxygen here but one oxygen here so you have you got to multiply two here to balance this oxygen so now we have two oxygen but you have two lead as well but here you have one lead as well so what you do is multiply two to the lead for final adjustment so the final equation will look like so it gives two lead plus oxygen with two lead oxide this is how the chemical equation is being formed now the, for the laws of chemical combination the first law we'll be learning about is the law of conversion of mass so the mass is constant it's conserved so whenever a reaction takes place the mass of the reactants it will be equal to the mass of the product so you have the scientist who has stated this law and is also well regarded his name is Lavio sir and you will be learning about him in the later stages you have this fire bonfire burning and then you have let's like, say one kilogram of bonfire in total weight is burning you will get one kilogram of ash in no change in mass this is basically called as conservation of mass so you have this another reaction of 28 grams of nitrogen combining with 6 grams of hydrogen to give 34 grams of ammonia and if you add this 28 plus 6 you would get 34 and this in all accounts follows conservation of mass law of constant proportions so what does this mean is that for one particular compound let's take ammonia there will be always one part of nitrogen forming with three parts of hydrogen to form one part of ammonia this is basically law of constant proportion so if we have four hydrogens here instead of three it won't form ammonia it will form ammonium ion which is different case right for now you see this sulfur has four oxygens and this sulfur has three oxygens these two are two different compounds that you see here so for four oxygens this is a different case and for three oxygens this is a different case so by law of constant proportions reactions taking place should take place in a certain proportions else the yield result the products will be different before i end this video i thought of clearing some misconceptions that you might you guys might have so this is the periodic table and this is how you read the periodic table so you if you want to find oxygen or hydrogen you look into this periodic table find the hydrogen there you can see the element name here and then you can see the atomic weight here below it and then you have the element corresponding to it and then the atomic number of the hydrogen atoms same here for oxygen you have eight which is the atomic number of oxygen and then you have the chemical symbol for oxygen and then you have the atomic mass of oxygen notice that these are in points and these are the closest value that we can measure its mass what we assume in our studies is 1.008 we assume to be one unit of mass and 15.999 to be 16 units of mass so oxygen is nearly 16 times heavier than hydrogen and for constant proportions you have 1 is to 8 ratio of hydrogen atom to oxygen atom by mass so this is also uh, another example of constant proportions that you see i've taken examples apart from the textbook as well so if you are still struggling to identify other examples go through your textbook there are more than one given there for this video we'll be ending it with another question of this the another name for conservation of mass is what is it loss of constant proportions is it loss of uh, industability of mass law of multiple proportion or gay loose law
and the answer for this would be interestability of mass this was given in the slide two slides before this uh, i haven't mentioned clearly but the another name for conservation mass is indestructibility of mass with that being said this concludes the entire chapter of atomic structure please check the description for extra questions and lecture notes for this chapter and all the text and tab table of columns that you have seen is from the textbook itself and apart from the images that are from google do remember to go through the back of the lesson questions glossary and points to remember with that being said thank you for attending